Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is Adam with Defined Obedience. This video is going to showcase some foundational obedience of Big Red Ford. He's a service dog in our Defined Independence project. Um, so you're going to see him going through the paces, doing some um, solid to foundational block building obedience. Still got a long way to go with this dog um, as far as really starting to build some of the tools he's going to use as a service dog. We're training him for a local client in Apex, North Carolina, that's got progressive MS. So he's going to be a full-blown service assistance independence dog, as we call him. Going to be used as a balanced dog. Doing all the traditional assistance dog tasks, um, picking up, retrieving things, opening doors, um, and just kind of being a stable companion for any particular need that his handler may need. Um, but you see here he's a fox red Labrador, about 18 months of age. Big goofball for sure. Um, the more obedience we have installed on him, the more serious that he gets when working. But he is your typical goofy Labrador. Um, as soon as he knows that, that he has a job to do, he, he focuses nicely. And he's starting to mature more and more as training progresses. Doing a little bit of touch pad work here. Um, just it's been a completely inducive exercise. Just teaching him through marker training um, to touch an object, and we can actually get him pivoting around this. And this can be used to train a lot of things. Um, we'll use it for some heel seeking, um, where you see me all pivot around him, and he'll follow and keep himself in basic position. It's also going to translate over to once he fully understands, you know on command touch this touch that we'll start giving him some vertical um, surfaces to touch to start mimicking turning on lights um, flipping light switches fan switches um, pushing the handicap door access pads that um, certain retail and public um, locations have And you see this has um, so far been taught completely inducively. Um, probably another week or two we'll start adding a bit of compulsion just so if he you know, blows us off on the command we can just get a little, a little more serious about it for reliable, reliability reasons. You can't, uh, or we don't, force the dog to do something um, or correct the dog into doing something. Once the dog has a clear picture and understanding is proving that he knows what we're asking, then we'll add that little bit of reliability compulsion just for um, when environmental distractions appear or he comes in contact with them, he knows he's still got to do his job. Right there you see him doing a little chill, as we call it, where we just ask him to kind of go right in the sphinx position with his chin on the ground. This will be nice. It's it's like a super stable down. So if we're at a restaurant or there's a lot going on, we can put him in the chill position and um, he'll be even that much more static by not looking around or seeing what's going on. And you can't see, but I'm kind of running up the street and uh, just testing some static positions and going to go into recalls in a moment. And you can see very static and settled in his um, you know positions, sits and downs. Um, but when you know the recall or release word's given, he fires off. So it's nice. Um, good working attitude. He's willing to do this. You can see his attitude is um, up for everything. Sit 
He's he's had a rocking sit since before we got him started, and you can see when asking him to sit on the touch pad, he can't help but rock back, and he's not learned to scoot his legs underneath him to come up to the pad. Um, it's not that of important a thing, but I'm always looking for little ways to to push these guys. Hand signals, of course, are nice too. So if you're talking on the phone or you're in mid-conversation and you need to send something out to the dog, it's always a nice backup. So this footage was shot uh, a month or two ago when things were a little bit greener. This is footage of Ford working alongside another young dog that we had in an obedience program. Um, this is the Phoenix, another Red Lab. And we're out at a big local park, and we're going to be doing some honoring. Obviously, being a service dog, we're going to need to have Ford be very reliable and focused on um, his handler or the people that um, he needs to listen to and not others. We also need to keep him be very static in the presence of other animals and distractions and whatnot. So we got him out here at a local park with Phoenix, another young lab. I think Phoenix is about seven months old at this time. And we're going to do this little recall game that we've kind of created where we're going to have the dogs almost leapfrog each other. So they have to honor... The other dog, they're both in a static position. One's given a recall. That dog comes on in, and the other dog has to resist the temptation to chase. And then we call him, and we go back and forth, back and forth. This is Phoenix coming in now. And now we got Ford coming in. And you can see both dogs are doing a good job of focusing on me, the handler, and not each other, even though they'd like nothing more just to run around a rough house with each other. But there's um, a lot of engagement that we create between dogs and handlers with our training methods. And you can see here they're focused on um, the human. This is actually the first time we put Ford through the paces with this exercise, and he did pretty good. Um, where Ford's recall is a bit more finished, so you see he comes in a bit more respectfully. And then sometimes I'll do a by finish where I ask him to um, go around behind me and drop into a down in the basic position. These are both Red Labradors. They came from Red Diamond Pointing Labs in Humboldt, Kansas. We've um, trained quite a few dogs through them. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, this is Adam with Defined Obedience. I'm a certified master trainer and training director of Defined Obedience. And this is uh, Ford, our first dog in the Defined Independence Project. And we also um, produce search and rescue dogs, dual purpose dogs, narcotic dogs, and our Defined Defense program as well. So, hope you enjoyed watching the videos. We've got quite a few others. Um, thanks for tuning in.